Welcome to fam welcome to Miami. It's hot as hell here, and you guys brought the heat, let me tell you. You know, my name is Mike Cartley. Some of you might know me as Big Mike. I am from the Treasure Island office, and they call me Big Mike because I'm big. Is it a giveaway? Six foot four, 270 pounds of twisted steel, baby. Well, yeah, that, that 270 pounds might have been a while ago, let me tell you. Brandon Beal, this is what 40 years later is going to look like, brother. God almighty. <laughs> Listen, I'm, um, I'm grateful that I'm mentored by Andy Riddle, my friend, for uh, 12 years now, maybe 15 years. I want to thank Andy and Jane for allowing me the opportunity to serve the team. It's always an honor when you're asked. Always an honor. Now, when I put this talk together, I learned some things about me and what I really think is important for me and what I want and what I have to do differently to get what I want. And um, I hope this talk helps you get a glimpse of what you want. Here's my question for all of you right now. Do you want to be the hero in your own family? You're going to show up one to two years from today somewhere. Question is where? You see, I know some of you guys are in a dark spot right now, so, or some challenges you're facing, or if you're not now, you will be in the future, I guarantee it. You've got to, I'll tell you this, to get out of a difficult time you're in now or in the future, you're gonna to have to have huge, bold, God-sized dreams. When your dream is bigger than the problem or the dark spot you're at, you'll overcome it. In other words, you're gonna be bigger than the problem. You've heard Andy Albright say, if your dream is as big as a pea, you'll stop in your tracks with a pea-sized problem. We can't let temporary setbacks create permanent failures in our lives. I used to think, until I got around this family, I used to think I could get this or I could get that. And I lived in an or world. Why can't we live in an and world? Why can't we get this and get that? We need to learn to play back in our head what you want over and over and over. What do I want? How do I get it? Andy's even made a coin to remind us what we want and how we get it. You see, our mind will move to the loudest voice it hears. Hear, you're saying, hear yourself saying what you want, not the challenge you're facing. Become obsessed with what you want. You may be right about the current setback that you're in. You may be right about the adversity you're facing. Like you, I too have struggled. I get what it's like to worry about money, relationships, and trying to figure out what my purpose in life is. I know what it's like to lack confidence. Fall into a slump and wonder if you'll ever feel happy again. I've been beyond broke. I have slept in my car. I have tasted the salt of my tears at night questioning if it was ever gonna get better. But does it serve us to believe it? Again, the way our mind works, it goes to the loudest voice it hears. Successful people have the ability to program into their minds the things that they want, and they play that over and over and over, and they become familiar with that. And that's the loudest voice in their head, and our mind goes to the loudest voice it hears. Successful people know they belong in their dreams. Look at Andy Albright, Andy Riddle, Fitz, Mike and Noel, Stephen Davies, Diane Lampy, these other leaders. They played what they wanted over and over and over, and they didn't allow adversity to stop them. I can 100% assure all of you, these leaders have faced some very dark times. Why are these guys great? It's because they don't complain. They don't talk negative. That's what average people do. The greats talk solutions. If they're tired, they get to work. If they're heartbroken, they get their ass to work. When most people quit, these leaders just get started. You know, 
I didn't realize it until I joined this family, but as a society, we became a master at leaving. We face a problem, we face a challenge, and we leave and we try something new. How are you ever, in God's name, going to win the game of life if you're not in the game? By the way, some of you might be thinking right now, oh, that price is too high. I don't know if I want to pay the price to win. Wait till you get the bill for regret. That bill's generational that both you and your family will pay. You see, these leaders, they realized early, either they sacrifice for their dreams today or their dreams will become the sacrifice. Their dreams aren't hallucinations. The dreams of the other person they wanted to be was, oh, that would be nice if we could get that. Their dreams aren't a joke, man. God gave these people and used the dream you have in you as a glimpse of a preview of what's possible in your life. The dreams I have didn't come from me, they came from God. I'm a Christian and I believe my dreams came straight from God and they're true. Whatever your faith is, your dreams came from outside of you or your God. They put them in, God put you in them. Put your dreams in you, they're not a joke. Don't treat your dream like, oh, that would be nice if we could get that. Treat your dreams like you need air. Andy has said, if you're in the water and the water level comes to here, you're fighting like hell to stay on top because you need air. Treat your dreams like you need the air. Become obsessed with what you want. Whatever the challenge that's in front of you or me, it pales in comparison to the power within us. Learn to fight for your dreams. For God's sakes, are there any fighters in this room? I fought my way up. I fought to get to work. I fought to get on my feet. I fought to stand. I fought to live. I fought with my fears and doubts and insecurities. I fought with the challenges of getting older. I can't fail. There's no backup player. Remember, your dreams are a preview of what lies ahead of you, and you must get obsessed moving towards the dreams and not towards the fears you have. <clears throat> We've got to stop moving towards thoughts that don't serve us. By the way, why do we keep going to those, back to those negative thoughts? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because that's the dominant voice you keep playing back in your head over and over and over, and the mind goes to the loudest voice it hears. I love you. Begin to take your thoughts and dreams to a different level, and begin to take the action necessary to achieve the life you were born for. If you want to win, the play to win and stop, trying, and stop playing to survive. You, you see, some of us, Talking to me, we're not giving 100%. We're not giving 70%. We're not giving 60%. We're not giving 50%. Get serious about what you want and give it 100%. You will be, in the for you will be a force in the world that's unstoppable. I'll tell you this. If you're afraid of taking risk and pursuing something meaningful, meaningful you should be more afraid of staying where you're at, especially if you're miserable. Because if you're miserable now and nothing changes in five years, you're gonna be more miserable. The clock's ticking. You know, understand pain is temporary, outlast the temporary. Pain is temporary. The Bible says where there's no vision, the people will perish. People, me included, lack vision. The other thing people lack is depth perception. We think the dream we want is further away than it is and we act like it. We think it's a mirage and an oasis that's so far away. We don't let our minds go to what we want so it's not the lowest voice in our head. That was my thinking. I kept thinking to myself, oh boy, that thing's so damn far away. And um, it's, it, it, it's farther away than what it is, it's not. Andy Riddle has told me I'm closer to the thing I want more than I know. If you knew how close you were, you would push yourselves a little more. You're so much closer to the person or the dream you want. You understand you're one meeting away. 
You're one relationship away, one emotion away, one thought away. You are closer than you think. Just stop thinking about what you don't want. It doesn't serve you. See, I've learned through this family, I gotta watch my thoughts because they become my words. I gotta watch my words because they'll become my actions. I gotta watch my actions because they'll become my habits. I gotta watch my habits because they become my character. I gotta watch my character because that will become my destiny. By the way, what's thinking? How do I think better? What's a thought? A thought is a process of asking yourself a question and answering it. Just ask yourself better questions and you'll get better answers and better thoughts. Andy said the quality of your life is determined by the quality of questions you ask. So you're facing a problem that's giving you a lot of thought, that you're giving a lot of thought to. That's okay. But rather than say, oh, I'm gonna lose this one. That's just me. That's just who I am. Maybe I should just give up. Well, ask yourself a question like, how can I overcome this? Who are the people like me that have won? What's my story gonna look like when I win? How will I feel when I get there? What strategy or tactic do I need to implement to overcome the problem that other people have not overcome, but I'm gonna overcome because my dreams are a preview of who I'm supposed to be? Get familiar with these thoughts and voices. Get more, more familiar with the emotions of getting there. Know all pain is temporary, outlast the temporary. See, let me put it to you like this. I remember when I was a kid. I am right, baby. I remember when I was a kid. That's kahuna on my shoulder right there. And uh, for the most part, I was happier being a kid as an adult. Did you ever feel like that? Did you ever wonder why that was? Did you ever say, boy, life was easier and more fun when I was five years old? Was it because you had more freedom as a kid? I don't think so. I didn't have more freedom. My mom and my dad told me and my sister when to get up, what, when, to, when to go to bed, what to wear. That doesn't sound like freedom to me. Yet, I felt like I was happier as a kid than as an adult. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you had 24 hours of straight, pure happiness with no stress, anger, fear, or worry? How about seven days of pure happiness? No stress, anger, fear, or worry. Yet, being a five-year-old kid, we were basically happy every day, not worrying about anything. The other thing <laughs> we were doing is we were dreaming, dreaming of what we wanted. I was dreaming about what I wanted to be when I grew up, or dreaming about getting that new two-wheel bicycle, or that new toy. I was happier more often than not in constantly dreaming. As a kid, the loudest voice I heard was what I wanted, and I saw that in my dreams every day. And I kept repeating that to myself over and over and over. Remember, the mind goes to the loudest voice it hears. Nobody told us, kid, we couldn't be the astronaut or doctor or whatever we wanted, whatever we wanted to be when we grew up. In fact, our family encouraged us to go for it. We could be anything we wanted to be. I remember I wanted that new two-wheel bicycle, and I don't, I'm not really too sure why. I didn't, uh, I didn't know how to ride. And uh, <laughs> you all been there, I could tell. And then I got that new bike. Now I had to learn to ride it. I was scared. I was scared I'd fall and that would hurt. And I don't like pain then, and I don't like pain now. Well, the dream of riding my new shiny bike was more important than the pain of falling. So I got on the bike, and I did fall. You all probably thought I was gonna say something profound like I just started riding. No, uh, no, no. Fell right on my ass, fault. <laughs> and uh, I, I had to add that fault in there. Uh, I got that road rash in my elbows and knees. Here's the crazy thing. After I washed the blood off, I got right back up on the bike. And I did begin riding it after a bit. It was wobbly, but I was riding it, and I realized that there was no more pain. Or I forgot about the pain of falling after I started riding. When I think back about it now, 
I realized the pain of getting my dream was temporary. And if I stayed focused on the pain, I would have never got the dream of riding the bike. When I stayed focused on the dream, I didn't think about the pain. The pain was temporary. I outlasted the temporary. An hour later, I was driving with no hands. I know now if I didn't sacrifice for my dream then, the dream of riding that new shiny bike would have been the sacrifice. Then I grew up. And uh, what some people might say as an adult, I'm not sure if I like that. And I got a job, and I learned the world treats you differently as an adult than as a kid. They tell you how much you're worth every hour. They tell you how many days you're allowed to be sick. They tell you you got to work eight hours and eat in 15 to 30 minutes. They tell you you got to work six days to have one day off for fun. I get to work all year and have a one or two week vacation. I get to work my whole life only to retire at an old age and then contemplate about taking my last breath. I kept hearing that over and over and over and I kept repeating that in my head and that became the loudest voice I hear until my dreams and my self-worth were beat out of me. When I was a kid, I could be anything I wanted to be. Now that I'm an adult, the world says something different. So why don't we have that childlike faith to go after what you want today as adults? Is it because you're afraid you'll fail? Understand failing is part of the process of winning. It's not a wish. It's a dream you make happen with childlike faith. Now I know every man, woman, and child want one thing more in this world. That's tomorrow. You've heard Andy Albright talk about the dash. The day you were born to the day you die. The dash represents your life. What's your dash going to say about you? Let's start your dash today, not when you were born. That dash just got smaller for everyone here. And for some of us, it got real small. I want to introduce you to Diane. She's my sister. Her dash was very small. You see, on January 1st, 1974, Diane was killed by a drunk driver. She was 17. I learned a lot about life then, but that's another story. I put that up there so you realize the clock is ticking. What's your dash going to say about you? One to two years from now, you'll wish you started chasing your dream. Let me repeat that. One to two years from now, you're going to wish you started chasing your dream today. Now, when I started this talk, where are you going to show up in the next one to two years? You're going to be somewhere. And um, are you going to be the person you wanted to be when you get there? What's your life going to look like? What are you going to look like? What would you have achieved in those couple of years? What would your memories look like? Like, here's some memories. I came here 15 years ago for the money. And I've stayed because of the leadership and the culture. Did you think for a second I was going to go be at a, a basketball tournament with these guys here? I never thought that. Did you think for a minute I was going to be at a basketball court with, these, with this guy here shooting jump shots? Or, how come my button ain't moving? Oh, here it is. Oh. I don't know who put that in there. <laughs> Did you ever th I never thought I'd be in Ireland golfing or scuba diving in, in the Caribbean. I think often of the dreams and um, the emotions. So who's that other self you're going to be? There's only three types of people you'll show up as in one to two years. The first one you could be is invisible. 
No one knows what you've achieved. You kept no, nobody kept a record of your life. I'm not talking, referring to the big things you've done. I'm talking about the little things. Nobody knew you did. Like sending flowers to the person who was going through a bad time. It's about doing the right thing for the right reason without anybody knowing or seeing how many views or likes you got on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Ask yourself this question right now. Are you willing to let whatever's going on in your world right now or whatever's going on in your family cause you to show up one to two years from now invisible? No one knows you. You didn't make a difference to any, of, any other people's lives. You didn't do anything significant. You had no impact on anybody. You just coasted and existed. Is that you what you were born for? I think not. You were born to do something great in your life. I'm no different than you. We were born by God to do something great in our lives. We weren't born just to show up invisible. You know, here's a real crazy thing. I want you to think about this for a second. You know, we people are the only living thing on earth that has the ability to dream and change our lives. Think about that for a second. No other living thing has that ability. The other living things just learn how to survive. Why is that? Could it be because God put, gave you the dreams as a preview of the life you were born for? Yet what some people do is they just they, they survive and become invisible to the rest of the world. You have the ability to dream and change your life as well as other, as well as other people's lives. Now the second person you could show up in one to two years is a victim. You can use the story in, one, in two years. I was a victim of my own circumstances. I was a victim of the people. I was a victim to that addiction. I was a victim, a victim, a victim. If you believe you're a victim, you will surely repeat that thought and hear that voice over and over and over, and you'll show up as an example to your family, your parents, your children, your friends as a victim. Something tells me that's not what you were born for. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here to get better. I only hit the pause button here for a second. Understand this. For you to see the growth on the outside, you have to grow on the inside first. That's why reading and attending these conferences and associations are so important to your inner growth. By the way, if I find myself being the smartest room, uh, the smartest person in a room, I'm in the wrong room. Get around people that got what you want. You need to know you can change your life and have a better life. I'm proof of that. I'm not the same person I was prior to, prior to finding this family we call the Alliance. This is more better and a hell of a lot more fun. Now, the third person you could show up is one to two years. Wow. The third person you could be is a hero. You're not invisible, you're not a victim. People know you, you got good relationships, you got money. Many people in your life inspire to be the hero of their own story. Understand this, there's people out there right now telling their story to themselves about their past and they keep going back to the invisible or victim character over and over. That's the loudest voice they hear. And the mind goes to the loudest voice it hears. That's where they're going to show up. Then there are the people that talk about being the hero. They say, I'm going to be the hero. I'm going to win. I'm going to do something great in my life. They keep these thoughts in front of them. That's a great place to be. I pray you understand this. When you see these families that are happy, that have the relationships, they got the money, they got the cars, they got the houses, they got the boats, they got it all, understand there was somebody back in that family that wasn't rich, and then the one showed up. The one that decided, I'm going to be the hero to my family. The one that changed their family's destiny. See. If you're serious about changing your life and getting the dreams you want, you'll find a way or you'll find an excuse. 
Understand the reward comes after the work. I got a short video here, what I think a hero looks like. Watch and listen. Am I supposed to play that? Was there a video? Oh, I don't know what you're looking at. What you looking at? I don't want to see that. Anyhow, I had a video up there of um, Kobe Bryant. Why is Kobe Bryant a hero? He came from nowhere. He's dead. And we still talk about his greatness. How many people he's changed. You better damn sure remember when Marcus said, a said at, the, you be, at the edge, you be the one. You be the hero of your family that will change your family's destiny. You be the one. You be the one that will, be, that will change the generational wealth of your family. You be the example. You be the one with your picture over the fireplace mantle so your family praises you after you're long gone because of the sacrifices you've made to get what they got today. You be the example. Let me tell you something. In my family, I'm the damn example. I'm the one. I refuse to be invisible. I refuse to be the victim. Yeah, I'm Big Mike, son of a cop, long on action, short on words. Yeah, I know we weren't rich. I, yeah, I know I was, there wasn't a lot of formal education in my family. I know I'm over 60 years old. I know now I was born to be the hero. You could be the hero in your family. You could be the one. Remember, when you start facing an obstacle or some adversity, I assure you, you will. You just say, no, I'm the one. I'm the one that keeps going. Know this, when my sister was killed, she gave up two lives. The one she was living and the one she would have lived. When she was killed, she gave up the chance to be the hero she was destined to be. Understand the strength is in the routine. Find the routine and stick with the routine. You hold on to that and you will be the hero. That's my time. Thank you.